Guys, we are back in Free Code Camp doing HTML, CSS. We're on exercise 21, and we'll probably go to 30. We're, uh, 20 is a little bit much for these videos, so we'll go to 30. So it looks like we'll have about seven, uh, five or six or seven videos this time around. So if I remember correctly, we're you, we're working with anchor tags now. So let's see here. Here's an example, blah, blah, blah. Your A element should have anchor text of cat photos. All right, so where's our A element? I guess we need to create one. So we'll say A, A, href equals to here. So this is where our, our anchor element is going. And then do we not copy that? There we go. And we wanted to say cat photos. All right, run test. There it is. Cool. So you can look to the right here. And you can see, look, oh, it's an anchor tag. When we click on it, it's going to take us to freecatphoneapp. Dot com. Create a P element around your A element. Alright, so we're going to write a paragraph around our anchor tag. So let's just go ahead and set it up. And let's give ourselves a little bit of space to work with here. Alright, and your A element should be nested within your P element. That's true. Your P element should have text, view more, view more, and let's run this a minute, and there it is, so view more, and then cat photos. Cool, so that was two. Make dead links using the hash symbol. <coughs> Excuse me. Your A element should be a dead link with the href set to the pound. All right. So um, href kind of by default needs to have something in there, if I remember correctly. And the default here, in most cases, just putting pound. So this will this won't. You can click on it, and then it'll just put pound at the top of your URL, and it does nothing. So if you don't have a value, just uh, ampersand, a hashtag, pound is what I called it back in my day. <laughs> and uh, just use one of those tic-tac-toe looking mofos. All right, so now we're going to nest an image in our A element. So let's see if we can just... So, so let's see if they'll let us do that. So... See how we can click on it all now? Cool. Saved us a little bit of typing. So what do we do? We took our image class that was already here that wasn't part of this paragraph. We then inserted it into the paragraph and into the anchor tag for the link. And bam, we're good. So that's three. Uh, we're moving on to four here. We're killing it. We're going through about a slide a minute right now. It's pretty good, I'd say. Uh, your your image element should have an alt attribute set to a cute orange line in its back. So alt for an image is basically uh, what their text is. So like uh, when you hover over it, I believe. So a uh, cute orange cat line on its back. Nice. So we're going on to five right now. Sorry, I'm keeping track so I can't, I don't go over because uh, that's the one thing I wish they, they had this numbered. Uh, one of whatever. So that would be very nice. Maybe I'll send them a message about uh, making it easier to list. Or, uh, but yeah, you know, so we're going to create an unordered list, a bulleted list. So, um, 
it looks like we can do this forever. We're going to do it right below where our image class is. And we're going to say UL. So unordered list. And then uh, we just want to have one li slash li. And we'll just say cats. Something like that. All right. You should have three li. Oh, we need three in there. All right, so cats and we're gonna copy and p oops we'll just copy three three more elements of this I'm fat finger in the keyboard so cats cats and cats cool so we created our unordered list, so that's why they're bullet points. If we wanted to create numbers, we'd use uh, OL instead of UL. And then we printed out cats three times. All right, so we need an OL with three LIs in there. Okay, cool. So we just did our UL. And this time we'll create an OL, which is what I was just talking about with the ordered list. It's pretty easy to remember the Difference between UL and OL. Um, just remember that one's ordered and one's not, and should be a problem. So we'll type this out the old-fashioned way. And let's see here. And so there's our ordered list with three objects. We don't have anything in there, so we'll say dogs, sheep, mouse. I don't know why, but we're going with the animal theme. And there we go. So now we're moving on to exercise seven, I believe. Let's see here. Uh, create a text field. So the text fields are kind of cool. Um, so here we go. We do a little something like so. We say input type equals text. And then now we're able to click in it and we can type, yeah, I don't know, whatever you want to type. Cool. Uh, and this is uh, useful in like uh, web development because you'll be iterating the HTML into, you know, PHP and Java servlets and things like that. I think we're going on to eight. I think. Right, add placeholder text to the text field. So you can put a placeholder. This is like, because uh, obviously, like, what's this box for? Um, and you, maybe you just want to put it in there. So where's our input type text? And then placeholder. Like, uh, in this case, this is where you add your cat photo URL. So cat photo. URL and make sure you spell placeholder right and you can see right there it fills up but it rem it's removed once we start typing I think we're going on to nine I'd be really impressed if I kept track of this all right so nest your text input which means we only have one more to go also all right next your text input element from form from a, a form element Nest your text input element from a form element. All right, so we, we're creating a form. And we're going to set. And we need uh, to close the form after this guy. And what do we want in our form here? We want to set action equal to slash submit cat photo so take our relative URL meaning whatever page we're on and then supplement it with this or concatenate it with this is a better way of putting it go there let's run that and we're good so what just happened so this is more technical 
we are now getting this form and having it do do take something. So before this was just empty data to a degree. It's just something I messed around in. Now we're actually doing something with it. And I believe we're at number 10. Um, let's see here. Add a submit button to the form. Okay, so now we're now we're submitting it. But no, we're setting it up. There we go. Alright, so what do we want to do? Within the form, we want to say... Let's, we could create a button. We'll set the type equal to submit. And... Uh, we just want to say submit on it. Slash button. All right, make sure your button element is closing tag. It does and run. And you can see right there, there's our submit. And that is exercise 10. I think we did pretty good. This is, but we're at about 11 minutes. So we took maybe about a minute, a little minute 10 per example. So did we, did we keep on track? There we go. We did our 10. Cool. Um, but yeah, if you guys do 10 of these a day, uh, you'll learn HTML. I mean, that's that's in CSS. Uh, this is pretty, pretty great. I, I really like this a lot. It's a little bit harder because the it's a design's a little different. But keep on checking out um, FreeCodeCamp.com. Uh, comments, questions, concerns, all that good stuff, guys. Reach me in the comments. Thumbs up the video and share it if you can. I think. Just want to say thanks for um, the likes and the comments, letting me know if I'm doing good. I'm learning. Um, hopefully you're learning still. This is a field we all need to be learning in. And if I'm ever if I ever misrepresent something, because I'm like I said, I'm learning. Let me know. And if the videos you find them helpful, let me know. That that really um, goes a long way. So I'll see you guys as always in the next video.